How did I make the Christmas in Hong Kong music video? One, writing. When I write a song, I use my phone to help me remember the tune and the guitar chords. This is because I can't read music very well yet. I set up my phone and get some musical ideas together. My first idea was to use another Christmas song for the tune, so I chose this one, "Merry Christmas, Everyone" by Shaken Stevens. Merry Christmas, everyone. After I have the tune, I write the words. Here's my notebook. You can see many of the words changed as I was writing. Here's a part that didn't go into the final song. If I say, if I say fire chicken, my teacher says that's wrong. But Turkey is a country. It's Christmas in Hong Kong. Hmm, maybe not. After writing and rewriting, I have all of the lyrics. This song has an A B C B rhyme scheme, so sleigh rhymes with bay, and what they are rhymes with M T R. I also had to think of lots of words to rhyme with Hong Kong. After that, I practice the song. Jingle bells are jingling on a one-horse open sleigh. There's no room for horses on the streets of Causeway Bay. I've never worn a bob cap, and I don't know what they are. But oh, what fun it is to! Just don't get that song. Is no snow to dash through. It's Christmas in Hong Kong. Two, recording. This is what Christmas in Hong Kong looks like on my computer. It's a bit complicated, so let me explain. On the right are the different instruments: the drums at the top, then bass, guitars, three of them, the bells and my guitar solo, and my singing. These black hairy caterpillars are the sounds that the instruments make when they are recorded. So the jingle bells start here. Then the drums come in up here. Then the bass and guitars. And then finally my singing. Jingle bells are jingling on a one-horse open sleigh. There's no room for horses on the streets of Causeway Bay. Now I can't play everything at the same time. That would be very silly. Instead, I record the drums first using my keyboard, then the bass guitar, then the electric guitars. And then my singing. I'm on the nineteenth floor. 
And if you speak to security, they will help you with the door. Then I mix everything together so that it sounds big and heavy. There are a few other stages that I missed out. For example, adding tubular bells, adding a guitar solo, adding some girls and boys shouting. Changing my singing a bit. Father Christmas, Santa Claus, or old Saint Nick at that. We don't have a chimney, can you get into our flat? I hope you don't mind heights, cause I'm on the 19th floor. And so on. But you get the idea. I'm not an amazing singer or guitar player or producer, but I learnt to do all of these things by myself without any training. I taught myself to play guitar when I was 13 years old, to write songs and to record them, and you can too if you're interested. There are many free apps for phones for making songs, and your school or local youth centre often has rooms to play or record music. My advice is just two words. You can. OK, enough about that. Here's me being hit by a rocket-powered dinosaur poo. In part one, we looked at the writing and recording stages of making this music video. At this point, I have the lyrics on a piece of paper and the finished song, which I put on my phone as an MP3. Now it's time to shoot the video. I didn't do this by myself. I had some help from my friend the mysterious J.R. If you remember, when I recorded the song, I had to play it again and again. Once for the drums, once for the bass, three times for the guitars, and so on. When we shot the video, it was the same. I played the whole song four times all the way through. First, it was me playing guitar like this. Then, like this. Then, it was me playing bass like this. And another one like this. Each one is a shot. The video was made from four shots, as you can see, and each one is different. A director will use different shots to make their video or movie interesting. Let's have a look at the differences. This shot is still, and this shot is moving. This is a long shot, so you can see all of me from head to foot. This is a medium shot, so you can see half of me. And this is a close-up, which is just my face. This shot uses a zoom lens, which makes everything flat. 
and this shot uses a fisheye lens, which is like looking through the eye of a fish. We had to repeat a few special shots to get them right. For example, this is the MTR shot. And this is the shorts shot. Choosing the best take each time is a big part of the editing process, so let's look at that. When I finished shooting the video, I came home to my computer and looked at all the different takes of each shot. This is what they look like. There are 17 little video files. The next step is to edit all of these into one video. Editing means choosing the best takes and putting them together. When we change from one shot to another one, we call this a cut. Uh, here comes one now. Three, two, one, cut. As I said before, a director wants to make their film interesting, so they need to change between different shots all the time. For a music video, we can do this in time with the music. I'll play a little sound on every cut, and you can see if you notice a pattern. Though I like to sing it, I just don't get that song. There is no snow to dash through, it's Christmas in Hong Kong. Did you hear it? There is a cut at the start of each bar of music. As I said, we cut to keep the video interesting, but sometimes we need to cut for other reasons. Here, for example, I start laughing when the mysterious JR moved the camera, so I had to cut to a new shot where I was not laughing. If I did not cut, you would see this. Here, I cut to make it look like I'm changing my jumper. Again, if I don't cut, then it's not magic. Another important job here is to replace the camera sound with the MP3 of the song. If I didn't do that, it would sound really bad. There's no room for horses on the streets of Causeway Bay. Shooting and editing video are not hard. Most phones have cameras these days, and lots of editing programs are free, like my one. I made my first music video using this camera and Windows Movie Maker. As I said in part one, if you want to make movies or music, you can. And so, that's how I made Christmas in Hong Kong. I hope you've learned something, and uh, what's that sound?
this is Mr. O. I'm going to uh, teach you how to play Christmas in Hong Kong. So we start with a D chord, which looks like this. And because I don't want to play these top two strings, I normally put my thumb here. I think that that's not the right way to play guitar, but I never had lessons. So, and all the time you want this rhythm da 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 like this. After D, it goes to B minus seventh, which I play like this. If you find that very hard, you can play it like this. After that, it goes to E minor. G and then A. Then back to D. When we get to here it just changes through the same chords again, but in a slightly different order. So it goes G, A, B minor seventh, E minor, then G, A, then G, A, D. When you see me play, in the video, I play it a little differently. First of all, I'm playing with my fingers like this. And the second, I play the A up here. So this is the electric guitar that I'm going to play now and um, if you notice in the video I play it a little differently and a lot of the time I'm just using one finger. Um, this is because I have it in my guitar in drop D tuning um, which means I have to take this string, the E, and put it all the way down to a D. So I'll do that now. This is now D, A, D, G, E, E. So it starts off on a D again, which looks like this. And I'm not playing this bottom string at the moment. Then I'm going to start playing this bottom string to make it sound a bit heavier. go to that B minor seventh chord but I'm only playing two strings these two then we go on to the one finger chords this is E minor but just with one just with one finger then we go up to the G and then the A to D. Then for that slightly different part, 
same thing, almost. That's the G, up to A. And then the B, instead of going down here, I just go up one more. Right up to the ninth fret. And then all the way down to two. Then up again. The solo looks like this. Then the last part of the solo is looks hard, it's actually very easy. You're just playing as fast as you can. And it's just these two strings. So we start on 10. Then 12. Then 15. Seventeen, nineteen, and then actually it's twenty-two. This guitar doesn't go up that high, but it'll be like this. Anyway, as high as you can go.
Thank you.